<laughs> brother, brother, another, another finish, brother. Another, everything is good, brother. Alhamdulillah, we go home, enjoy. God give us everything, brother. Alhamdulillah, thank you so much. And and me? No, no, no. For no, no, no. He wanna say to be continued. <laughs> Hello. We're here at the uh, the weigh-ins. I think, from what I'm gathering, we're also here for the fights tomorrow night. So we'll see, though. My Russian and his English ain't really jiving. That's Frank Mir, the former UFC two-time heavyweight champion of the world. I got a call two days ago asking if I could be in Tashkent, Uzbekistan. I honestly didn't even know where it was on the map. Now I'm here. I travel all over Russia a lot. I have a three here, multi, and I've used the hell out of it. <laughs> but I've uh, been to a couple of the stands, Kazakhstan, Azerbaijan. Uh, this is my first, Uzbekistan. That's because they just now legalized MMA, so this is a big deal. When I arrived at the press conference, it was pretty refreshing to see all of the familiar faces. Immediately, all of the fighters paid their respect to Frank Mir. It's always cool to see fighters that are currently fighting pay their respect to the legends of the game. Umar Nurmagomedov, the younger cousin of Khabib, talented, undefeated, and is the main event here in Tashkent. At 11 and 0, there's a lot of talk about this being the last fight for Umar before he joins the UFC. That is the original Mexican gangster, Javier Mendez, here in Tashkid to corner Omar. We're here again, Will. First class right here. Never seen this before in my whole entire life. On the outside looking in, you would think this is all madness with so many people. But Khabib is so humble that you just don't even expect him to react a different way than showing respect. Khabib was shot to see me. What are you doing here, brother? What are you doing? You don't take over the world without me, brother? I gotta be here with you. <laughs> Abdul Manap, Habib's father. <laughs> be careful, you can punch your face, brother. Trust me, I know. What I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, what I'm Uzbekistan встретил всех бойцов и гостей и журналистов на высочайшем уровне. 
Узбекистан занимает в боксе один из лидирующих позиций, а не команда в зачетной первой. Я думаю, ММА приживется здесь, и у них будут достойные бойцы. Having the support of a government is a lot different than everybody else trying to do it on their own. So the support of the government with Arabic, you know, taking the lead role here, helping helping everybody, it's amazing, you know. And uh, you know, people are gonna understand who, who Uzbekistan is in the fight world real soon. When I was a kid doing MMA or training martial arts, I mean, even kickboxing, like it was a big deal, you know. Like those guys, you know, they fought all over the world and stuff, but you know. You could be the you know the heavyweight champ of the world holding four or five belts in kickboxing and in the nineties you could walk down the street and no one knew who you were, you know. It wasn't like you know boxing. So I always had a strong suspicion that MMA would be the same way, that it would just always be the you know the stepchild of uh, of the boxing world. Um, to think that we actually stalled the number one boxer right now in the world, right? Koto or uh, excuse me, uh, Canelo paused his fight on the zone. You got a $360 million fighter, you know, the biggest attraction in boxing. And it was one of our offshoot belts, not even a real belt, not even, it wasn't like it was Connor fighting or, you know what I mean, our, our premier guy. It was, you know, two well-known fighters, you know, Nate and, uh, you know, Jorge uh, Masvidal. But boxing sat on the bench and waited for us to get done before they fought. I never, my wildest dreams ever thought that would ever be the case. And to think that now here I'm traveling all over the world, you know, uh, I've been in countries that if it wasn't for MMA, I never would have got to experience the people and the culture. So, uh, you know, it's an amazing, uh, you know, uh, I'm blessed and very lucky. I've just been in the right place at the right time. It's the Uzbekistan uh, Shmo. <laughs> I think tomorrow's will be phenomenal. There'll be a lot of great fighters out there. I'm hoping to, you know, that's why I want to, you know, get a link here to my Facebook page, fan page, so I can get people out there watching on the West Coast or on the West side of the uh, the globe and see, uh, man, some of the fighters out there, some of the best in the world talent-wise. And they're just unheard of because, you know, the, the marketing on the English side just isn't there. But, you know, hopefully I can change that and turn that around. This region produces a ton of great fighters. And as, as of right now, if you're paying attention in the boxing world, they're making a huge impact in the boxing world and really soon you're going to see a huge impact in the MMA world uh, when they have this kind of support uh, you know time time is going to show that I'm correct and uh, we will see Right now my shoulder's torn, but I fought with it. They did surgery on my hip, I need surgery on my knees and my neck. I'm gonna go down and do stem cell in Colombia. No, I talk about like how like, like Oh I'm beat up. My body hurts all the time. That's why I'm gonna go do it. Yeah, right now my leg is torn. I can't. Yeah. 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 I just spoke on with you. I spoke on with you, Chef. How much are you? Right now, 120 kilos. Oh, no, so that's true. So that's true. But your base, your base one is 110. Yeah. It was very 109. When you fought with Brock Lesnar. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. I remember. Habib is an extremely humble individual. Uh, Personality-wise, he's actually not built to be a superstar in that sense because he's such a humble, modest man. Uh, if he were more outlandish, a little bit more cocky and bravado, which his fighting ability, he's the best fighter in the world. If it backed up a little bit more, he would have five times as many followers. Uh, so if anything, his humility and his, how humble he is, as far as a marketing standpoint, kind of hurts him. I mean, you know, and I don't ever want Habib to change. I think it's, I think it's a fresh, uh, a breath of fresh air in our culture to not, you know, look, man, we're now living in the, you know, everybody wants to be Instagram famous. Everybody wants to do reality TV shows. There's all this, uh, uh, all these superstars with no substance, you know? I mean, how many times do you see someone famous and you're like, what do they do? Famous for the sake of being famous. And uh, Habib is the exact opposite. He's famous because he's a man of great quality, great representative of his religion, of his people in Dagestan, and of the culture of MMA. Uh, I couldn't ask a better person to represent us. You know what you need to do, right? Okay, not one round, not two rounds, not three rounds, not four rounds. Not five rounds, okay? Any round could happen, but we're going five good rounds.
A lot of the areas where it's very Muslim culture, um, uh, it's just part of their creed and their, their, their background that they take care of their visitors. I mean, it's a direct insult for them not to take care of you. Like, uh, I've been places where, you know, I have them behind me and I'm going through, you know, security at an airport and they start asking me to pull things out and then real quick they realize, I almost got in trouble, they realized I was with so-and-so who's taking care of me and they're like, oh, you should have just said something, you don't have to stop here and just continue on, uh, you know. And so, yeah, the hospitality is just is incredible. It's, it's almost second to none, really. And then as far as the warrior culture, I mean, you know, hey, look, you know, they have lots of battles as far as there's been tons of wars here over, you know, since World War II. You know, dividing and, 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 and so you have very much of a warrior culture that, you know, just people were great. It was in their backyard, you know. And then uh, on top of that, one of the premier sports out here, you know, in a lot of these areas is wrestling. You know, you have some of the best wrestlers, you know, from Azerbaijan, Uzbekistan, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, Chechnya, you know, the, the Ossetians, you know, phenomenal, you know, wrestling heritage. And that converts very easily over into MMA. And even more so, or even on top of that, the, uh, you know, Sambo and all the Russian Federation areas. Uh, you know, is very much part of the military and the curriculum there growing up. And Sambo is so easily transferable to MMA that it's just, I mean, take the gi top off and it's MMA, <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, add a few elbows and stuff. Uh, and so uh, uh, it's just such a turnkey. I, I really, it, it's a shame. That's why I want to be more part of this and helping bring it. I tried doing that for the ACB and was getting some notoriety there until it kind of took back over the ACA. So I kind of put it on a pause. Hopefully I can help out again and push it forward. But you know, it's funny, a lot of those guys don't think that they're like, oh, well, could I make it to the UFC? And I've had to like straighten them out and be like, look guys, you're just as good, if not better, than almost all the UFC fighters, skill-wise. It's the fact that you don't speak English and we don't have the Western culture paying attention to you. You're not selling the same amount of tickets. It's pay-per-view buys. That's what it comes down to. It's, it, fighting's still in a business. Sometimes people confuse marketability with fighting ability. And when the two come together, it's phenomenal. Sometimes you have guys that are great fighters, but they're not very marketable, like a Fedor or Milinenko, right? He could walk down the streets in, in, in the U.S. and he doesn't get stopped that much, so he doesn't sell a lot. But great fighter. Then you have some guys that are phenomenal marketing guys, but yeah, they're not great at fighters. And I won't give names because <laughs> they just insult people. Uh, but uh, you know, that's the one thing. If we could just get more English commentary and broadcast it, and especially now with all like DAZN and all the different apps out there, you know, uh, Fight TV, getting the people in the U.S. and, and, and you know and, and you know, uh, Britain to see the talent that's out here, they'll be fans. It's just the fighting is just really incredible. After weigh-ins, the fighters, teams, and staff all headed to dinner. But by, when I'm like 15, my younger brother is gonna be 24. <laughs> like. <laughs> Crazy, people are gonna think it's my son. What a protein. You throw a breather, you throw a breather, right? You throw a minute. Roy Jones Jr., one of the greatest boxers of his generation. Came over for the fight? Yeah. Yeah. Is this your first time? Is that you? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Obviously, you've been a rush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's not the greatest. The first time. <laughs> First time we gained about 20 pounds. Ah, of course, you can't hip it. You can't hip it. Listen, you can't hip it. You can't hip it. You cannot hip it. Cock the love. Got this at two stations, that's pressure. Very good. Nice. Crazy food. Nice spread. Great conversation. When you get to talk boxing with Roy Jones, right? По твоей теме будем продолжать. Короче, первый сет, второй сет, третий сет. Bring United, Real United. He said like he's the number one set. He's in the, I'm number two set. He's number three set. It's an inside joke. Nobody understands, but you can. Put it on that is Adamek Umarov, head of Uzbekistan's MMA Association. Nice to meet you. You're good. Thank you. Just welcome to Uzbekistan. We're always glad to see you guys in the Tashkent or anyway others count. I mean cities. You know, just enjoy. Dallas will save you. Dallas will save you. Thank you. 
Dallas would have saved. Dallas would have saved. Okay. Oh, yeah, say, okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. 702. Uh, hospitality is uh, like a um, number one in uh, Uzbekistan because, uh, you know, we love you guys, we love the other people who come in to visit, uh, visit our country, you know, um, and um, you can enjoy uh, the, our uh, foods, our history, you know, culture, you know, and also, uh, what can I say, mm, just enjoy. That's it. <laughs> I've loved it. <laughs> Seriously. It doesn't know what that, what, what does mean. Jiggy jiggy. Jiggy jiggy. And Uzbek jiggy jiggy is like like a singer, Uzbek singer. These songs. Jiggy jiggy. Brother, this is the third day, and for three days, I think this is like let me count, maybe twelve times we're sitting at the like tables and food coming non-stop. One dish after another, one dish after another, one menu after another. This is like crazy. This is <laughs> something like special. I don't know if you, <clears throat> if you never experienced it, you will never understand, you know. So guys, come to Uzbekistan and this is a great experience that you can get. Phil, what's going on, brother? How are you? What are you doing here, brother, in Uzbekistan? Soaking up the culture, brother. Welcome to Uzbekistan. Yeah, it's, it's, it's good. It's better than I expected. I, I expected some uh, some cold, cold gray uh, five, but the five here is good. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. Like, it's, it's, uh, have you ever fought in this region before? Or is this, the first time? Um, this is the first time in this in um, Uzbekistan, and um, I fought uh, last year in uh, Rus Russia. And this one is way, way better. The five is way better. The very next morning, I had a driver come to the hotel and pick me up. Although I had one day left here in Tashkent, I wanted to at least go around the city, see the traffic, hear the traffic, see some of the buildings and monuments, and at least experience Tashkent in a way. It's very important to do that when you're traveling abroad. Bizning arqamizda Amir Temur haykal turibdi. Bu kishi bizlarni faxrimiz, g'ururimiz. Chunki Amir Temur osha biz uchun, bizning yurtimizda kelajagi uchun, ozod bo'lishi uchun ko'p urushlarda, ko'p qahramonliklar ko'rsatishgan. Amir Temur e'zozlaymiz juda ham. G'ururimiz, faxrimiz desak ham bo'ladi. Amir Temurda bitta anolar bor. Osha gaplari kuch adolatdadir. Her bir işte o kişi cengilerde, kırgenlerde kuç adolatdadır diyen şiyor bilen kırışkeli her doyum şu adolat bilen, siyaset diyem adolat bilen yöndeşişken o kişi Amur Temur Ahmet Yasevi hikmetlerge, cüdem Ahmet Yasevi'de anavlar icatlerge kızık kalı şu için her bir ceng oldudan Amur Temur babamız şu Ahmet Yasevi'nin hikmetlerine Hikmetlerine 70 Mart ayı etkili ve cengi kırgeli, ıhlas buna kırgeli. Madaniyatımızı rojlandırışken aynı kısa uz kısalarını hoş geldiler. Şu için Amur Timur ıı, babamız, <gülüyor> fakhrımız, ıı, kilacagimizde yortu bergen şah sıfatı da gururlanamız. Bu için ıı, biz cüdem, ne deydi? Tıl tarif yok da o kişinin ıı, tarifleşke tıl ucuz. Büyük şahs bu geldi. I had a chance to go over to Humor Arena with some of the guys before tonight's fights just to see the setup. 
I was really excited to see what the GFC and Uzbekistan had in store for tonight. From the very first moment I walked in, the arena had the look and feel of all the other big shows that I've attended. The lighting, the production, the sound, everything was up to par. Like any MMA event, each corner was equipped with their own locker room. This was Khabib and his team's locker room. There was no shortage in detail when it came to this event. I was pretty excited about seeing what tonight had in store. After seeing the arena and hearing that tonight is going to be a sold out crowd, you can tell that Adabek Gumarov and the Uzbekistan MMA Association wasn't going to hold anything back from this being a great event. They just, they just ask us, can we make show here? We say, of course, we have promotion, we have uh, fighters, we have everything, and they, they open uh, federation here, Uzbekistan MMA Federation, and uh, Atabe Komaro, he invite us here. And you know, now we're here, you, you, you see today's arena, you saw yesterday weighing, you know, this is almost the UFC level, you know, and uh, I think it's going to be very big, big event tonight and uh, for future, for young generation from Uzbekistan, it's going to be very big motivation. And uh, right now it's just beginning here and uh, after a couple years, I think it's going to be huge everywhere in Uzbekistan because Uzbekistan is very big a lot of people almost 36 million people you know and a lot of young guys and everybody love MMA and that's why we're here good night have a good night for fighters and have a good night for fans and good luck for fighters
celebrities, entertainers, and sports stars all filled the arena. This wasn't no regular show. Uzbekistan wanted to show the world that they belonged in the MMA scene. I love it here. It's great. I mean, the hospitality, the, the city's beautiful. I, I love it here. Here we go. This is GFC 20 and Cash Camp. They added the spike to the car too. Yeah. Yeah. It was confident the whole time. This is in my genetics. Rely on me, you never regret it. Uh, victory is mine, yeah, that's where I'm headed. For this passion and drive, I'm forever indebted. No to motivate each person here. I'm sure it's my purpose to persevere. Yeah, you're looking at the chosen one. I said you're looking at the chosen one. The dark inside us
dentro do joelho, vai dar de levar. Hello, everybody. 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 Hello, Just rest on him, you know, no working. <laughs> hey, Will, what's up, brother? Black Wobby. How are you? I'm good, brother. How are you? I'm good. Ready for small war. <laughs> How is Uzbekistan food? I, I don't try plow. I want to try plow after fight. After fight. After fight. I'm with. Stretching it. Ah, what's up, bro? You see this level? Like you see. <laughs> Hands ready.
Флаг этот нужен сейчас. Мои вещи забрит у Хамерза. You won three rounds, okay? okay? You didn't look great, but you won three rounds. So, hey, you win. No matter what anybody says, you won. And your record now 16 and 1. Okay? Not 15 and 2, 16 and 1, okay? Only one loss, okay? So it's very good. So, hey, hey very good. locker room, Umar was getting ready for his fight. He was the main event, the attraction, and tonight was all about him. Being the cousin of Khabib, that brings pressure. But for Umar, he lived for that pressure. You could tell he was made for this. the bottle you put in a teapot it becomes the teapot now water can flow or it can crash be water my friend
I'm feeling great, man. Feeling great. The audience is, is wow. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. It's, uh, it's like a movie. It's uh, crazy, man. <laughs> Вообще сколько? Только вы. А вот Вообще сколько? Я сам Вообще. Не могу на намагаю работать вообще. Идем. Садись. Потом сделай сразу сначала. Давай. Потом у тебя будет не будет время. Да, потом не будет времени. Желаю ему. Хорошо. Ахмат Сила. Another successful win for Umar. He is now 12 and 0. The future is bright. 
Телефон дайте. Да, да, да. Раз, два, три. Релакс, релакс. Релакс, релакс. Это очень известное слово сейчас. Релакс, релакс. I hope I ready for you see. He did what he did, but you know it was relaxation that caused it, and him not being in no rush, you know. And uh, like Habib and I told him, Father's plan will work perfect on this guy. But stay kickboxing range, and he did that perfectly. And when the guy came in, he took him down, and it was a beautiful executed plan. And uh, you know, Umar's ready. You know, he's ready for anybody. You know, in the next level. If, if, this is where it's going to be, then this is where it's going to be, but I, I feel he can go wherever he wants to go.